So one of the key advantages of Shenzhen is, is the markets. You can basically, uh, well, we're able to walk from a hotel room and in a few minutes be able to pick up almost anything from uh, you know, switches, capacitors, processors, tools, so magnifying microscopes, soldering irons, oscilloscopes, it just goes on. These things are affordable and they're all, they're all just there. I think some of us went off to the market, but yeah, I mean, we're always at the market. It was bizarre. We, we returned from this visit of a factory and going, wow, look at all the things these guys do. And all that was on everybody's minds was, I've got to keep exploring these markets. We get off the bus and then everybody would immediately run into electronics markets again and try to make the most of every minute. Well, the markets closed at six sharp, so we had about an hour and a half to look around. Walking into the first building, I just assumed that was the only building because it was the biggest electronics market I'd ever ever seen. Later on, we found out that this was just one of, uh, we never found the end of the buildings. It feels like it goes on forever. So every opportunity that we had, we spent wandering around the markets and looking for all the different parts we could find. And you had everything from the component level of electronics all the way up to big batteries and phone parts. So things have been all scheduled for each day. There have been time scheduled for the markets, but I think what we hadn't been anticipated was how keen everyone was to get back to the markets. I did decide to go to the electronics market because I realised that the time we had available was not going to be enough so I was going to wanted to spend as much time as I could there as possible. One of the things that surprised me and maybe in hindsight it shouldn't have was the absolute draw card of the markets and the location of the hotel. I think everybody you know as soon as we got back to the hotel was chomping at the bit to get out to the markets. We were literally in the heart of it. You could walk down walk down street, walk across the promenade 50 meters later and you're in you know the biggest electronics market in the world. It was incredible. I mean the the market strip is a couple of kilometers long and it's built that are 8 and 40 and 60 stories tall and they're both sides of the street and they're all crammed full of electronics. So when you first arrive at Waichung Bay it can be really daunting firstly because it's so big. I was lost a couple of times in the same building so it was that big. They're so big and there's so much stuff that you just you just want to get back into it and see what you haven't seen yet. There is no easy way unless you live there for months that you would actually get your head around what's there. Your head spins basically. <laughs> it's one of those things where people tell you in advance what it's going to be like and then when you actually turn up and see it for yourself it's like um, you're seeing something that's bigger than your brain can comprehend. The jaw-dropping aspect of it is when you're immersed in it. When you see all these people, little families, you know, running stalls, you know, with the kids helping mum wrap electronics to send somewhere internationally. For many people it was the first time they had been inside the electronics market so a small group of us went from the hotel, walked into the HQ Mart building which was the first building uh, just near the hotel and you could see everybody's eyes light up. They were looking around like they were a kid in the chocolate factory. It was it was fun to see the rest of the group, like happy little kids running around, I guess. You can get anything you want there in terms of electronics, um, starting from a small chip to the robots, you can get anything there. One of the guys that we were with ended up buying a big bag of bolts <laughs> because they happened to be there and they happened to be what he needed. For some of us, it was just the experience of being immersed in such a, an amazing, uh, intense uh, place of all these access to all the components I've always dreamed of at incredibly inexpensive prices. That was great. People basically just dispersed immediately, started going down these little rabbit warrens of like, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this. And within a few minutes, everybody was spread out all through the building looking at little interesting things. SP32s, LoRa modules, uh, anything to do with communications. I want to set up a network at home and just set up a bit of a plate. Pretty much anything you can imagine that goes into an electronic device you can buy here. I did not have enough money or enough carry-on luggage to actually get stuff. It's uncanny to go to a place, usually a shopping centre is, you think of um, Chadston or Meyer or one of these things, you walk in and they're selling towels and cups and blankets and but this is this market, you'd look up the advertising on the side of the street and it would have SO234 package chips on the advertising. Oh we've got transient voltage suppressors, we've got ICs, MOSFETs. And all of the advertising down the street is for electronics and not just consumer electronics. You can see ads for cameras and phones and things everywhere but things like reels of components to go and pick and place machines. They're ads for like individual components. You walk through the you know the underpass under the main road and there is a big poster for pick and place reels. It seems bizarre that you'd have an ad targeting an electronic engineer in Burke Street. It's a, it's a really surreal experience. Basically, you step out of the hotel and you are in an electronics market that just goes as far as the eye can see. You, you walk through these markets and they are wall to wall to wall electronics. And the, the, the SEG main building was, uh, would have been 50 or 60 stories tall. I got up to about level 10, just walking up walking around, looking at everything, going up to the next level. Just endless. The markets went on forever. In some stalls, people are, are actually manufacturing. There are a lot of cable loom 
making found a stall that made test jigs where you give them a circuit board circle the test points that you're interested in within a day they'll bring you back a test jig that allows you to put a circuit board a completed circuit board in and pull down a handle and uh, and put it through its paces i went to pick up my usb keys which were ready it's like being in a literally in a in a ball pen it's just so much fun walking around figuring out what's there and how it all works to check out some new thing that i'd seen or heard about from somebody else if you want LEDs, there are entire buildings just dedicated to LEDs. We went through the stalls, components on the ground floor, floor five and six were all manner of LEDs. It was like an LED city. We, we were all very excited to see so much choice at, at those markets in um, next to the hotel in Shenzhen. But in saying that, just because there's a huge electronics market doesn't necessarily mean finding anything's easy. Needle in a haystack comes to mind. I think initially, People were just a bit too surprised to buy anything. They were just looking around and trying to get their heads around what they were seeing. Each, each person, their, their needs uh, cha varied a bit. And so if some people had a bit of a shopping list, they had projects and that, they, that they had underway and wanted to get specific parts. And so the challenge then was like, oh, I need a, a solenoid or electromagnet or I need a, an ESP32. Where do I go? Because these markets are you know, maybe six or 10 floor buildings and not, not much in the way of maps. You have to try and figure it all out. In our case, walk out of the hotel, walk into a market, and walk out two minutes later with 50 chips that do exactly the job you need, that's untouchable. Amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So I've wanted to build a giant Tetris game for a long time and it needs a lot of LEDs. But then people started seeing things that were relevant to their projects. But when I got into market, I found out that you know, I could do it for about a tenth of the price that, that I had calculated. So yeah, through the week, in snatches of time I had to get to the market, I bought all the, all the components I'm gonna need to, to get my massive game of Tetris together. I got myself an MP3 player. Because there was 11 of us and we were using WeChat, we basically just crowdsourced the problem. Everyone would just say, chat a little bit about what they needed and other people would just scurry through the pudding like, like ants and the, we had this constant WeChat conversation and, and photographs saying, I found this, and they'd be like, where is that? And it'd be stall, uh, 5H, you know, BQ3 or something like that, and it'd be like, where's that? It was really quite an intense, uh, exciting uh, journey. It's almost like a like a, a, a commando mission. If you don't know already, WeChat is pretty much the instant messaging platform of China and also allows you to do uh, payments for things as well. So no one's got a wallet in China? You know, it was really valuable going as a group because we could kind of say like, John, what am I even looking at here? Or like, hey, do you, anyone have any idea where the solenoids are? Or you could kind of, there's a lot of like chat on WeChat going on being like, hey, I found a, I found a microcontroller chip over here and it's at this store, but they're not here yet and this place has got a better price. So I think that was, it was really fun. Just, just testing the CSP32 at the uh, SEG market and it uh, just loaded up MicroPython and it's, it's all good. There's a function in there which will, is tied to a maps application. So you can zoom in and say, oh, I'm here. Where are you? And you can send them your location as a physical pin on a map. We did a few trips to catch up with some guys and they were six blocks away. And we just turned on real-time location, rotated our phones till the arrows are pointing and started walking. And we had no idea where we were going, crossed some gigantic roads, but we got exactly where we needed to be. So it's basically, it's an application that's rolled up everything you need out of a, a social messaging app. Once you've got it, you kind of go, how did I ever get away without this? A big part of the of the markets is being able to haggle. And for me, the problem was I'd, if there's something I'd want, I'd basically go, oh yes, I'll, I'll, I'll pay that amount because it still felt cheap. But for things I didn't want, I'd go, oh no thanks, and I'd walk away. And then the price would drop by half or, or, or a third. And I'd go, wow, that's what I should be doing every, all the time is walking away. That's part of the culture. So what really helps is to go with someone who knows how to haggle. When you first walk into the, the first building, you see all of these electronics parts laid out in front of you but because the whole city is really oriented around electronics it's ended up being broken up into districts so if you want a particular type of part or a particular type of consumer electronics there is a certain region that you go to for example if you want mobile phones or mobile phone parts things like motherboards for iPhones or you know all these sorts of things there is a certain area in the city that you go to and pretty much everybody is selling things related to phones. If you're after a specific thing, you really need to know, am I after a component? Am I after a cable for a thing? Am I after a full computer? It's all there, but you have to know sort of which segment to go to. It took us a little while to sort of find our feet, but 
oh, the LEDs are over here, the remote controlled drones are over here, the computers are over here. So that took a couple of days to really nail down where each location was. In a place like Shenzhen, where you're surrounded with everything you want to do, you take a walk through the stalls and you get inspired to build things. In the markets, it's definitely like that. It's things that you haven't even thought of. You're like, oh, I need to get this. And that's the kind of thing that we ran into is just buying heaps and heaps of stuff, like kilograms of just screws and things that you really didn't think you needed. And it also spurs off new ideas, which is a really great part of that kind of experience. Uh, I got some awesome LED stuff for my shed that's 240 volts. I need this part. Oh, I'm in Shenzhen. They're all right here. So it's possibly the most valuable thing is just to have instant supply. I saw a counter with solenoids uh, and I'm thinking, gee, what can I do with those? Yeah, you, you would. I mean, even I did it when I was walking around, you'd see something you're like, oh, I could really make something using that. I saw a counter with LED signs of different sizes and, you know, picked up a few and got some ideas in mind. You could really see that a lot of the people selling the things had a good amount of expertise in the area. It's just such an inspiring thing to be surrounded by so much and so many components that are affordable. We definitely don't have anything local that gives us anywhere near the access to those sorts of things. It is extremely valuable to have makers close to their components. Pretty much every market store we went to, you can order the products online through eBay or one of the other services and, and have them mailed out to you. So access to good and interesting components is much better than it used to be. The range for components and parts here in Australia is obviously less than it would be in Shenzhen. But another issue is the time, is it's not nearly as easy to go out to a store, find the parts not there and go to a new store, or even ordering them online can take forever so it, it, do, it just means there's a break between the idea and building the project which is not ideal. The stalls and the markets are they're not just a mum and dad sitting down selling random parts they found on the street they're often linked back to in fact almost always linked back to big manufacturing houses. One of the things I was looking out for as we were going through the markets was IDC cables. There's a particular type of cable that I use in fairly large volume for some of my projects and they are very laborious to make. I sit here and make them by hand. I wanted to find someone to make them for me. So I was walking around the markets and I saw someone with a few IDC cables on their stand. It wasn't quite what I wanted, but it was close. So I went over and said, can you make me cables with these specifications? And I need 300 of them. And they said, yeah, sure, about four days, so they'll be ready early next week. And I said, oh, that's no good. I'm flying back to Australia tomorrow. If you walk up to a stall and say, I want 50,000 of these parts, they're more than likely not going to have 50,000 in a stall that's three metres wide. But they'll ring up their factory and say, we need 50,000 parts for this guy, and they'll turn up the next day. And they said, oh, no problem. Come back noon tomorrow, we'll have them. So at about 11 o'clock the next day, I got a message on WeChat saying, your cables are ready. And I walked around to the stand and they had a big bag full of my custom made cables. So there's very strong link between these markets and the manufacturers. So in a lot of cases where I'd find a stall that sells a product that I'm interested in, I'd walk up to them and say, do you have a catalogue? And they'd show me a catalogue and I'd go, oh good, can I keep this? And I've got lots of catalogues from all these manufacturers that we can go back to now. Because otherwise you'd be trying to hunt through Alibaba looking for them and you would got no idea of quantity, scale, quality as well. Uh, the other thing that happened which I thought was really interesting was uh, John Oxford was after a very specific sort of switch for his home automation projects. With John Boshua they found a, a, a vendor who didn't quite have the right switch but they then were able to call the factory and, and negotiate a switch that was exactly what John wanted. I actually found the supplier of the switches that I use with the help of a friend and a translator on the phone. Within about half an hour we had negotiated a custom production run of the switches that were modified to suit my particular needs. So he was able to custom specify a switch at the market and have it made and I presume it's being made and sent to him his home now. So it's really good to be able to see the parts in the stall and then connect that to the manufacturer and then you you've basically got yourself a new supplier just walking around the markets. It was, it was great to see that just that immediate access to the manufacturer. Well I think it's awesome, it's just a mind-blowing place, I've never seen anything like it. Been to um, Akihabara which was pretty good but this is an order of magnitude better than that. It's been pretty incredible, quite yeah. a lot of stuff here. It's good, I think everyone um, learned to um, uh, locate components and learn how to um, uh, interact and haggle and, yeah. with, and, and achieve a purchase so it's good, had a, had a good lunch. Oh, it's been fascinating. Fantastic, so you've had a good day? I've had a great day and so it was really exciting to see people engaged with the markets but also reflecting on the learnings from the day and perhaps also seeing some of the things in the markets and understanding how the two link together so it was a fascinating experience being able to participate in this with the team.